Uh, good morning. It's still morning for about another minute. It's still good morning. Good morning. Yes. And if you're in, uh, if you're in the West Coast, good morning. <laughs> yes, but it's still morning here for a couple more seconds. Uh, this is conversations with Calvin. We the species. Um, beyond those blinds back there, uh, there's a. It's the feast of Stephen, which is a, a, a euphemism for a snowstorm. So we've had a snowstorm. So that chronologically puts things in in perspective. But uh, I'm. I've been so excited about sitting and chatting with Rachel Breton uh, for a long time. We've been, this has been in the works. Um, she's busy. I'm not. Uh, and, and, and for a ton of reasons, I've been so excited because, you know, the Rutgers thing and, and Rachel was a, a Rutgers women's soccer star and played professional soccer. And, and uh, there's so much, to, to unpack. And I, I was so thrilled, Rachel, when you said, yeah, let's do it. And, and you know, here we are, we're stuck in the house because it's snowing. And, <laughs> and um, so uh, let me formally introduce you. Uh, you uh, give a little background, talk a little bit about Rutgers. Take it away. Uh, thanks, Calvin. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I, I went to Rutgers. I first started at Villanova um, 20, uh, no, 2008 to 2010 and then transferred uh, to the good guys <laughs> uh, 2010 to 2012. Um, I did play there. I had Glenn Crooks and Mike O'Neill and Meg Ryan, um, great people. And uh, after that, I went to play professional with Sky Blue. Um, played overseas as well, played in Norway, and then ended my career again with Sky Blue. And uh, uh, a little background about myself, I'm a psych and English major. Um, I started off as a biochem major at uh, Villanova, and um, that did not work. <laughs> uh, it's more of an athlete student than a student athlete, so um, I had to, trans uh, had to uh, shift gears, and I'm actually really excited that I took the English and psych realm because that's how my brain works. Um, and I'm sure you could appreciate that as a journalist. Like uh, there's nothing about writing a good piece or um, hitting someone in a different cerebral atmosphere. Um, that being said, I'm an academic, uh, a Big East uh, academic all-star. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm still, every day I'm still trying to learn. Uh, I currently I'm now retired, which is really weird to say. I like to say sabbatical, um, but you know, soccer is my first uh, and major love, and um, I'm looking to utilize my, where I'm at in my life to constantly give back to the gift that was given to me. Okay, great word, giving back. You you mentioned sky blue, and and one of my. Uh, and I've been, I mentioned this to you, I've been a, a Rutgers women's soccer fan for a long time. Um, and I've met, um, I, I met the coaches and, 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 and I sent you some pictures of me with the team. So, uh, and, and then as synchronicity would have it, um, my company, NJ Discover, was doing the broadcasting for TV for Sky Blue. So there's more times that I saw you uh, yeah um so the the connectivity is great um for, you're in marlboro and i'm in manalapin we're just connected. yeah we're <laughs> we can almost uh almost uh quite almost yell out the window not quite yeah you can get your uh your you know your pit your cup yes. and i'll get <laughs> yes. <laughs> <I'm invited. laughs> yeah um so what are you doing now let can you unpack some of the things you're doing now? Sure. Uh, as a retired person? Yeah, as a retired person, um, I'm actually trying to still figure out what I really want to do. Um, you know, it's like uh, it's like that saying where, you know, you're climbing the mountain and once you reach to the mountain, you realize that you're just on top of a mountain. That's how um, I felt now. Uh, so... Soccer is over, so now I'm trying to figure out what do I want to do with the three-fourths of, uh, of the rest of my life. Um, and, and as we spoke prior, you know, you were saying that 
that's part of your expertise and that you've jumped around as well. Um, so I'm in that realm of trying to figure things out. But currently right now, I uh, do sports psychology, um, do sports psychology mentoring. Um, it's a, with a program called Pro Performance, uh, Pro Performance Gurus. And it's all NWSL, MLS, and USL. It's all soccer. Um, pros, current to former, that do an online service that help mentor a lot of athletes, uh, which is really cool, especially now. I mean, we were doing this before remote was a thing. I mean, remote has been always a thing, but now it's definitely a thing with coronavirus. Um, but it's been very good because it's 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 engaged. I've engaged with a couple of teams, um, individual players and I've not just done soccer I've done trackies basketball um softball you know you just you're dealing with a human and their their mindset which is completely huge as an athlete and as a person you know like we talk about positivity and spirituality that's very um that's a big part of anybody um so I'm doing that I'm doing a plethora of things so bear with me <laughs> I do uh social media and marketing I'm um, director of a couple of companies and I do um, social media content where I do videography and, and photography, editing, uh, engagement, um, which I never thought I would be doing. I've, my dream job, if it wasn't playing pro, would be, um, uh, well, like, I'm not a, I guess, an, an editor, but it would be picking songs in scene, for scenes in movies. Wow. Or making like little Gatorade commercials or Nike commercials because I think you connect all of the arts, right? You you got you know you're telling a story, you're giving a positive message, and you're motivating. And those are the things that I I like to say. Those are my morals. Those are my my foundations. So that was one thing that I hope to do at some point. But that's why I started that. Um, and then I'm coaching. I'm coaching at uh, PSA, Princeton Soccer Academy, mm -hmm. um, and at Shatliff Soccer. That's uh, here in Monroe, actually. Okay. Um, and that's good. I have a couple age groups. You know, um, I'm about the development of the kids, so I really want the kids to – times are different, but kind of had the experience that I did that made me fall in love with the sport so much. Um, and then, again, like, my, my background is – mindset and mentality um so i want to develop these kids to not only be better players but better people uh as i ch channel that uh, myself every day um and then i do some freelance writing so that's cool and, you know I'm, I'm bouncing around <laughs> you know it's interesting uh i'm older and and you don't realize it you don't realize it as you're growing up growing up but uh, one day, you know, a light bulb will go off and everything you've learned and done comes back in, into your realm, if I'm making sense. Yeah, other, yeah. Nothing is wasted. The experience and, and the, the journey and the career changing, it, it all leads down the road. Did I ever think that I would be talking to you uh, on AI? Did I ever think I would ever wind up teaching at Rutgers, which I did last fall? Right. And these things are so you kind of just go with the flow and, and, and your flow is amazing in your accomplishments. And, and sometimes I, you know, as I listen, um, uh, sometimes I think to myself, um, I'm, I'm not talking to, to somebody who graduated in 2012. You know, I'm talking to somebody who's 65 years old. That's yeah. I, I, I get old a, compliment. Soul a lot. I get old soul a lot. And yeah. Um, and which I, is, it's wonderful. I really appreciate that. Thank you. I mean, yeah. it's not wonderful in my head because I feel like I am. Uh, my personality is that I have gone way too fast and I wake up and I'm like, okay. So, I mean, as you see, I have like all these books over here and f floating, you know, <laughs> floating books on the top. I'm just like constantly like knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. Um, and I just, you know, the, the, the biggest the biggest flaw as humans that we have is we think we have time. And I've always felt that way, even as a kid. Um, that's why, I mean, now I'm focusing a lot on recovery and sleep. And I think I burnt myself out a little bit. Um, but I wanted to go to bed late and wake up early uh, just so I could just soak up the day. And I wanted to, I was a yes girl and I like to spread everything, you know, out, which is like, you know, jack of all trades, sure. Um, but I'd like to say master of all trades because 
I, like you said, like I become obsessive with certain things. Like I want to learn instruments. I want to learn different languages. I want to so watch different kinds of films just because I think it makes you cultured and, you know, God created all these things. Why wouldn't we want to see them? You know, if we really have this one chance to do it, right. why not do it? You know, and then it could help other people too. You know, I always say that we're just trying to walk each other home. Um, and with information, you know, there's been so many times where I could say, Hey, I've been there. Oh, let's talk about that. And we have a connection and we're helping each other out at some capacity um, or you're reading something and you're like, this would really resonate with so-and-so and it changes their life. Like that to me, you, I wouldn't want a dollar for because I just think, you know, we're just trying to help each other. And um, my, as my mom said, like knowledge is power. Um, so, you know, that's what I have always pushed for. It's funny in the beginning of the movie Animal House, which is a college movie, there's this, Two guys are walking. Uh, I talk about this with my son all the time. There's a statue. And it says, knowledge is good. Oh, wow. At favorite college. So what you just said, uh, what your mom said about knowledge, it, it kind of resonated uh, yeah. with me. So uh, I'm, I'm jumping off topic because um, I have a few off topic things. So here's the, the scenario, Rachel. Um, excluding... Uh, Excluding uh, family and friends, uh, who would you like to spend a day with, living or dead, one day during the pandemic with, excluding uh, family or friends? Easy, easy uh, answer, Jesus. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Uh, got a lot of questions. We yeah, I know. <laughs> No, uh, we'll talk later briefly uh, about that. I, I've got some interesting thoughts about that, but later. So anyway, that's a great answer. And, and you know what? Um, I'm, I'm, I would have answered that myself, that. Love it. Yeah, true. Uh, anyway, moving, on, moving along. Um, so this is a little bit of a tutorial. Uh, what would you uh, recommend to aspiring athletes? Uh, yeah, um, I would recommend uh, doing your homework. There's a lot of things that um, there's a lot of things that I think athletes. I mean, it's all hindsight, right? I I don't think I took care of my body the way that I should have, um, but I'm also happy to have gone through certain things because now I know the importance uh, and everything's experience, right? It's like. You could be a great coach and analyze, but it only you can be a better coach if you've actually been in those shoes and played, and um, you understand those 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 dilemmas or circumstances, uh, and that's huge. Um, same thing as an athlete. Like when I talk to and I mentor a lot of these kids, I know I I know their kind, right? I know their struggle. I know their pain, um, and I think that's been a good. Uh, a good asset for me to help kids for them to realize that it is important to get enough sleep. It is important to hydrate. Um, it is important to find, to know yourself, do your homework just because I, um, let's say just because I think Rutgers is the fit for me does not mean that it's the fit for you or Abigail or Sophie, whatever, because we all have different DNAs. And we all have certain things that are just going to make us come alive. Like I like adventure. I like to explore. I like to, I like diversity, but some people might not like that. And that's okay. It doesn't make you weird. It doesn't make you um, anything other than yourself. Let's, let's just take away different, you know? So what I recommend to athletes is that you really get to know yourself. You get to know how many hours of sleep do you need? You, you get to know what takes you out of slumps. Um, what formations, if we're going to talk about soccer, and you're looking at college, what formations are you familiar with? What formations do you appreciate? Um, what coaching styles do you like? Uh, because I think a lot of athletes forget that it's a two-way street. You know, you could really want to go to, to a UNC, right? But why? And will UNC, will, will their return of investment be both, right? Um, will a coach like you, will you like the coach? 
will the players like you, will you like the players? Do you like the university regardless of anything whatsoever? Um, will it push you? You know, like these are all these like different questions um, that I would implore a lot of the athletes to ask themselves. And then to, I will always say, stay fit. I, I failed in that because I relied a little bit more on talent uh, than fitness. I, you know, I, I was never, I wasn't unfit, but I wasn't my fittest. Only until um, I started to play pro, I, I went to this company, AP2T, which I would now work at. And this guy, uh, Mike, he actually used to be a strength and conditioning um, coach at Rutgers. He just totally showed me that I have more in the tank. And I think the earlier you know that, the better you're off because it's it's a confidence factor. Uh, and it helps you take care of your controllables. Like, I can't control if I'm going to play or not. Um, some may argue, yes, you can, but that's not true, you know, because that's it's subjective, you know. In a, in, you know, in a perfect world, uh, as Michael Neal would say, like, in a perfect world, um, if all is equal, you just didn't get picked that day, you know, and that's how things happen. Uh, so what are the things that you can do to control yourself is, again, knowing yourself, taking care of your body, um, and making sure that you've done your due diligence, uh, which I think a lot of athletes forget because of the resources that we have. We have so many resources that we think that, oh, okay, well, this will get taken care of. This will like, uh, this will happen. This will happen. But sometimes you have to be ready for opportunity when opportunity meets you, you know? So that's what I would, I would tell the kids, okay. like, know yourself and, and fight. This is, this is great stuff. It really is. I'm sitting here listening. Really great stuff. Um, why is, as a professional athlete, why is the mental game so important? Um, great question. Uh, I think if anything, it, it's 90% of the game. You know, um, there's so many players that have succeeded in not even the end of your cell, just period. Because, you know, they're the best. They're the best in their world. You know, if you if you just study the psyche of Cristiano Ronaldo, you catch him always saying, like, I'm the best. And, you know, I appreciate a guy like Messi because he keeps me humble in being the best. Like, he says he's the best. And then, you know, everyone's in the – loves to argue who's better, Messi or Ronaldo. But to him, he's the best. He says that. And I do believe that – yeah, he works hard and he's very talented, but his mindset is that he's the best. Uh, if you look at um, players like Zlatan, like he's the best. Maradona, RIP, he's the best. Like uh, Muhammad Ali, he's like I was, I was number one even before I knew I was. Like this, like th this confidence factor is is huge. Um, I have a, a sign over here, the Mamba mentality, because uh, I was a Kobe fan, and um, you know he he would study past players not even that like be, beyond his generations and time and he would just analyze film on himself and others and he would wow. know certain things you know like mm -hmm. that's a mindset it's all mental right um so as a pro so there, as life is there are ups and downs and some days you're like you know, your 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 uh your BGs are playing in the background and you're staying alive with your glasses and you're walking down the street. And then there's other days that, you know, you just don't know yourself. Um and that's normal, that's human, you know. Things will, you know, ruffle your feathers and you're a little, you know, it, things get convoluted, but um to maintain that that narrative and it doesn't mean that you have to be delusional. It just has to mean that you have to be, have confidence in yourself. Um, I am into the sports psychology because I did it to myself. There was a lot of times even, with, you know, again, with fitness, we did this one thing, the man you, and I would just stop at uh, level 19. I had to get to 26. And for those that don't know what the man you is, is you're just running the, the whole uh, length of the, the, the soccer field or football field. Um, I needed to get there in a couple seconds and each time it adds up to a minute, but after level 11, the levels get down. So for the first 10, you're running there. You got to get there in 25, get back in 35. 
and then it goes 24, 36, 27, um, and, and so on. Um, and when I would reach 19, when I started to feel a little uncomfortable, and my legs could still go, my, my, my lungs could still go, because essentially I'm only running 19 minutes, and a game is 90, 45, right? 45 minute halves. And I just stop at 19. It's all mindset. Because after the 20 seconds, after I get my lungs, and after I say, well, yeah, I'm done, I have so much more to give. I have so much in the tank. So it just shows, like, you know, anxiety is a thing. And that um, there's if you if you are just against you and, and you're not on your side, everything goes. Then your touch goes. Then your value goes. Then you know, your character goes, you start to question, decision-making starts to go, and it's all because of a little thought, and, you know, as a psych major, it takes 20 positive things to outdo one negative thing, and if you're constantly giving yourself that fuel, yeah, my, I mean, that's why mentality is huge, you know, you have to have that good mentality, and it's, it's just like, it's just like, it's a muscle, your brain is a muscle, so you have to exercise it. So you have to have these positive affirmations. You have to, again, find your niche. And um, maybe sometimes if you had a bad game, because we might, and we have a bad practice, because you might, you have to reset. You can't just sit, you know. Tw after 12 minutes, that's on you. After 12 minutes of emotion, that's a choice. So, again, it's just remembering that and having to pull yourself out. Obviously, easier said than done because things hit people in a different way. And especially if you're, if you have a higher emotional intelligence or not, or, you know, if you're grieve in different ways, of course. Uh, but that, it, that is fact. <laughs> We're in COVID uh, as a former professional uh, athlete. Now, how do you uh, stay fit during COVID? Great question. Um, I, because uh, I just turned 30, um, because of, again, exercising the muscle, for me, I've now, there's no excuses. It's just, if, 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 what's your goal? And, and do it. You know, um, a lot of people, especially now, we have a lot of platforms that a lot of people just talk. You know, <laughs> they just put things out there. Uh, but we should talk more about accountability and accountability is just you and you, you know, you can have people that hold you accountable, but you don't have true accountability unless it's with yourself. So for me, I know that I can't just, there's some athletes that they can take two weeks off. They do nothing. They kick back, they sit down and they'll be ready to go just as hard the next day. I s struggle with that, but I know myself. So I know that I'm just going to do different um, waves of fitness. Um, there will be more of an anaerobic. There will be more of an aerobic. There will be more of a Tabata or um, functional movements or, you know, restored, uh, restoration. Um, and di different challenges. I can't do the same thing over and over again. Uh, I can't just go to the track and, you know, coast. I might have to go to different exercises, uh, you know, different avenues, different parks, um, and just keep a program. So for me, what I did is I, uh, I well, I invested in a whoop, um, and this helps you with your recovery. Uh, so you're not, you're giving optimal performance per day. Um, and I did this project, uh, this runner's project, and it's an eight week program. So I said, all right, you know what, we're going to be in COVID. Let's see how that goes. Uh, that was that was around this time. I just finished it. Prior to that, um, I just said, you know, you have a, I have a personal uh, trainer, trainer um, certification. Uh, and I've been working, I work for a fitness company <laughs> for years now. Uh, it's all about that. So if I'm preaching to my clients and to my, uh, someone said students, my players, and I'm not doing it too, that's an accountability factor. So I want to always be able to say, Hey, coach Rachel still does this. You know, why can't you, you know, and I, and I don't have, I don't, I'm not playing anymore. I don't have a season to prep for. This is just me. This is just me now. And I'm doing it for me. Um, 
so my recommendation to people is, yeah, I know there's not, I don't, I haven't gone to the gym. I don't trust it. I'm trying to be very safe. I'm with my parents right now. Um, and I don't, I don't want to get COVID. It doesn't look good. <laughs> um, so it's, I've invested in some weights, got some stuff on Amazon. Um, Me Me I've invested in, you know, some med balls, some ropes, um, and then I've just used the outdoors. It's so nice. You know, like there's, instead of running at the track, you run every mailbox or every other, um, you know, you do pushups outside, you find a pull up bar, you do things that people used to do, you know, like, I think we're very spoiled right now. And, yeah. um, again, I think it's great it, that we're being resourceful by using the resources but if they're not there, then what do you do? And it's just be creative. Um, and there's there's so many, uh, you go online and there's so many Tabata, Hit, 30 Minute Cardio, all this stuff on YouTube, on Instagram, you know, just, uh, okay. just get after it. You know, it's, it's kind of up to you. Um, that's tough to teach though, because if it doesn't matter that much to you, then it doesn't matter that much to you. <laughs> but it, it's funny before I... I I got up a little early and did my did my stretching. Nice. And I did my weights. Very uh, important. I ordered weights from Amazon. I had to wait two months because everybody was ordering weights from Amazon. Yeah. So I do my weights, my stretching, and when we're done, I'm gonna jump on the bike for 60, 70 minutes and nice. do some proofreading. And so the stuff you said uh, is so is so powerful. Um, what would you like your legacy uh, to be? Kind of heavy. Um, yeah, I would. Uh, young, but um, I uh, my focus is is, uh, and I've said this on a couple other podcasts, and I say it a lot. So if my friends are sick of it, I'm sorry. But <laughs> but um, just love and kindness. Like my legacy is, uh, you know, I talked about. Uh, Jesus and I've talked about God I am a Christian um, and I know Christians get a bad rep sometimes because they think that we're too dogmatic or we don't you know um, appreciate um, all these other cultures or communities or beliefs I'm not like that and what I've learned like my God <laughs> uh, and my dogma is love just love it's, it's just very simple it's very period uh, uh, it's a, you know dot love dot um because that's what we are you know when we're when we're born we're born as kids like we're pure as kids we we we, we love our parents we love yeah. everything everything's so amazing and fascinating and that's what the world is uh, there are some evils sure uh but what i would like for you know my legacy to be is to help people to love including myself and to constantly be kind, you know, I just want to have people be, um, their best selves uh, uh, for me too. You know, I, my number one fear is I don't want to have any music left inside of me. You know, I just want it all out. So Great. for a legacy, I'd like to, I like to leave that, leave it all Great. in court and, uh, be ready to meet my creator That's and, great. uh, and for more infinite times. <laughs> okay. Um, Kind of uh, winding down, just a, a, something uh, we are going to wind down. Something uh, I would love to get your your insight. Uh, it's a soccer thing, but it's also current events and has to do with Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We kind of talked about that before, uh, her battles for gender equality. Uh, I, I am a huge fan of women's soccer, and I'm not saying that because you're here. Uh, I demonstrated it with everything I've done. Um, but uh, I, I got so really into women's soccer watching the World Cup a bunch of years ago when the United States won. And when it was all over, the the, the amount of people who were watching was staggering. And then uh, somewhere on the news, I, I had heard that the, the men's soccer tournament, which I, I, I didn't watch whatsoever, but the men's that whole World Cup for the men got ten times, yeah. the, ten times the amount of money were paid out to the players as with women's soccer. And then I look at Ruth Bader Ginsburg and fighting for gender equality. 
um, I, I don't even know, uh, has that gap, uh, hey, how do you feel about that? And has that gap narrowed a little bit? Um, yeah, I, uh, how do I feel about it? Um, I am, how to say this? I, oh, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to put you on a spot or anything. No, 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 you're fine. Okay. I, I don't, uh, I think it's great that people are fighting for equality. Personally, I think that, sure, like I just said, love and kindness, like everyone should be equal. Um, everyone should deserve the platform to be their best selves and to, and to channel other people to do the same. Um, I think, I think that I have not been educated enough to understand the severity because I think in my life, in a lot of our lives, I think we're a little privileged because we don't know what it's like to have been a woman in the 40s or 30s. I've never experienced that. Or 50s or 60s or 70s. <laughs> I haven't experienced that. Um, I am from an Alpen, as I said. I have constantly had, I think, diversity in my life. And my parents um, have taught me to just love, period, and to not judge and to just um, be strong. And I, I really have taken out of my life the fact that, you know, that I'm, that I'm mixed, that I have a whole bunch of cultures behind me, that I'm a woman, uh, that all of those are minorities. But to me, I was never a minority in my world. So this year has kind of opened up a lot of doors that I think I might have shut um, and that I was not aware about, uh, which has now led me to do a lot more research and to kind of understand. And it is, it is painful because when you look back and you, I mean, you see so much growth, but then now you also see how there's still so much, so much more to go. Um, and I think for that reason, I think it's beautiful to see people fight for their beliefs, um, whether it be of race or, um, sexual orientation or gender or whatever uh, I think it's I think it's great um I think when it comes to women's soccer I think that it's a great thing that we're targeting the women's national team because that's the most looked at you know I think if if you deny that then I think you're in denial <laughs> um but I think what needs to the next chapter is for them now to talk about how other clubs are paid, not only in the NWSL, but, you know, maybe in the EPL, maybe in England, maybe in the top Syria, and maybe in Spain. Let's get all of the platforms and let's see. Um, maybe it's an American thing. Maybe it's not. You know, maybe it's a culture thing. I think we are in behind times. You know, um, uh, what's it, Michael? I watched a documentary, Michael Moore, um, and he talks about all the other countries and how they've accelerated and how we have it and vice versa. I'm not being not patriotic. I'm saying that it's important to look around and see all the facts and see maybe why, maybe find the crux of the situation for women's soccer. We're America is not a, a women's soccer uh, world. You know, we're football, you know, we're football, we're baseball, we're hockey, we're basketball. These things have been around for a long time and they've, and that, I mean, it just, if all is equal and this is just as fast and this is just as fast, but this has already, th this has a 400 meter race, mm -hmm. this will never catch up, right? So what can we do to catch up, to accelerate, you know? And right now it looks like we just have to get in a car and just go, you know? Um, so I think with that mindset, it's, it will be like that for a while, but I do think it's important to constantly put it out there for growth. I mean, the N the MLS, this is their, I think their 27th year or maybe now 28th. I don't remember, but it took them forever okay. to, to get to where they're at and they're not even where they need to be. Um, and you know, the NBA, they've gone on, they've gone on strikes, the NHL, they've gone on strikes um maybe 
that's what the NWSL has to do. But because we don't have the, the right sponsors or, or enough or advocators or, um, you know, endorsers, investors, maybe if we did that, then, you know, people would say, okay, well, we don't want you anyway. So it's a, you know, you're titillating between, you know, what is the right move? Uh, I think exposure is good. I think fighting for it is good. I think with true facts and true conviction, with the understanding of what the end game is, I think that's more important. Because I think right now a lot of people are like, the women should get paid just as equal as the men. And sure. But if you look at the platform, we're not bringing enough in person. Like that, I think this means that that means that ticket sales have to be higher. Um, we have to go on more social medias, and I think we are we are in that, um, in in we're in that up and up to right. do that. But these are the things that we're just doing now, and now this is like the, I think it's the eighth eighth season. Mm -hmm. eighth, yeah uh the eighth uh year you know it's picking up but we're looking at when it wasn't and it really wasn't a thing um i think we are using social media to our advantage but we are behind because we were behind you know um so i think we got to keep fighting um but with respect of understanding of you know revenue and sure everything you know because it's it's like uh if I work for a company and soccer side, I work for a company and, and you've done sales, right? I can't make anything if I'm not doing the sales because the company does not have the money to provide me for that compensation. It's the same thing, I think. And the only thing that's different is that you're, it's a professional world. It's professional athletes. You know, they should. They should get what they... You know, I suffered for yeah. that too. We should have gotten compensated yeah. a lot more. You know, twenty thousand as a minimum wage is is nothing. But when I started, yeah. it was six thousand. That's also nothing. It, you know, it's. Uh, but you got to start somewhere, right? Well, that was great. That insight, and this has been great. And um, this is this is a this has been a textbook interview with you so insightful and, and mind expansive um and you know what maybe to be continued because i'm here you're there and yeah and um so to to kind of uh, kind of wrap it up uh yes to be continued because we're neighbors you know because we're neighbors great word uh neighbors but rachel i, I just want to thank you so much for your time your spirit your insight your knowledge uh we're Rutgers alums I, I, I proudly say that and and so I'm wishing you uh merry and happy and healthy and all good things and I, I can't thank you enough for your time this has been wonderful thank you Calvin no this has been great this yeah. is the best way I know it's now the afternoon but the best way I want to start my snow day so oh, thank so you happy. thank you thank you so anyway uh hopefully you'll come back uh and and again thank you so much Rachel no problem. Be well. You too.